All right, Shalom, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh, Baal Shem Yahweh Shai. Once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Baal Shem Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem Rakakwadash. All praises and glories definitely do, especially in the times we're in. So, I want to say a few words concerning this video. This video was put up by uh, uh, the brother from Baltimore, Elder Karataza. And this is a pretty good video. The title is Dr. Brown. Doc, it, it should have said Dr. Quaz Brown. You know, that's what we affectionately name Dr. Brown. We name him, we gave him a nickname, Dr. Quaz Brown. And uh, Quaz was the uh, ancient god that the Edomites worship. And uh, if you take a look at Quaz, he looks, uh, Dr. Brown looks, Dr. Michael Brown, that's his full name, I believe. He looks just like Quaz. <laughs> so we dubbed him, you know, uh, <laughs> begin with Fella Pasta on down. We dubbed him Dr. Michael Quaz Brown, okay? Anyway, Dr. Michael Quaz Brown confronting black Hebrew Israelite hatred, the hypocrisy exposed. Yeah, indeed. These devils have the nerve to talk about hatred. And we believe that this guy, Dr. Michael Quaz Brown, is a, is a small hatter, as in a so-called Jew. And they, they're, they're the last people that should talk about hatred. Okay, they're the last people, these so-called Jews, they're the last people, these ish people, they're the last people who should talk about hatred. Okay? And our, our history of them has been nothing but hatred. Okay, hatred from them to us. And uh, when you go back to, uh, and what, what's, a, what's a, a good point to prove that? Well, slavery. The cargo slave ships. All right, who uh, there, there was uh, when you go back to Rome, there was a saying in Rome uh, from the Latin "cui bono," "cui bono," which literally means "who benefits." So a, a big question for you people out there is concerning the slave trade, which did happen. The cargo slave ships did happen. That's a part of our history. That's not from some movie of the week called Roots. Okay, back in, what is it, 1977, 1978, they had the TV series Roots. And I forgot how many parts there were. And I remember when they were showing it, I believe it was on either on ABC or CBS, one of those networks. Each night they had a different episode. It was like a, it was like an epic film, you know, it was like a saga, right? And it was called Roots, based on the book by... Um, Alex Haley, right? And it was about the, you know, uh, beginning with the cargo slave ships, how our people were taken from the north and west parts of Africa. But before that, we were living in Israel. That's what they don't tell you. But before that, we were living in Israel and we fled Roman persecution around 67 AD, going into 70 AD. And we predominantly came to the north pretty much all over Africa, but predominantly the north and west parts of Africa. Okay, like uh, Nigeria and those places, which is the west part of Africa. Till we were rounded up around the, the um, 14th century, which would be the 1500s going into the 1600s. According to Bible prophecy, our people were rounded up and brought into slavery to the Americas via those cargo slave ships. Now what people what people were mainly behind that cargo slave ship slavery? It was the so-called Jews, the small hatters. Now was that an act of love? No, that was an act of hatred. All right? Yes, it was to fill Bible prophecy and we were being punished pursuant to Deuteronomy 28. And the 68 verse, beginning at the 15th verse, going down to the 68 verse, it gives you all the curses that we as a nation would suffer, the nation of Israel. All the curses we would suffer, the main curse being that cargo slave ship, 
And you, even now, to, well, Michael Brown is one of them. Michael Quaz Brown is one of them. He'll tell you that that uh, prophecy does not refer to us. So you show you show you how much of a liar these small hatters are. And you know what I mean by small hatters. I got to talk in code. Because if, 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 if I make it explicit, they'll take the video down. Once again, the small hatters, they control the media. So if any narrative comes out that they can't control or they don't like, they, they try to silence it by taking it down. I myself have, ha have had many YouTube channels, me personally, have had many YouTube channels taken down by the small hatters because they control YouTube. Like I said, they control the media. They damn near control everything. You know why? Because they're the head of the wicked. When you go in the book of uh, Malachi, the first chapter, all right, Malachi, the first chapter, it tells you who the wicked is. Malachi, the first chapter, I'm going to go right to the point, the fourth verse. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places, which, which they have ever since the so-called, uh, the so-called, um, what period was that called? The Renaissance period. The word Renaissance is from the French meaning rebirth. The rebirth of what? The rebirth of the wicked coming into power, as in the Edomites. Because during the so-called Dark Ages, the Edomites were underneath us. All right? They were underneath us Israelites. And again, we've done plenty of videos on this. Okay, so all you have to do is search our videos. But going to the 1300s, the latter part of the 1300s, you had this uh, Edomite family known as the Borgia family which was also known as the first crime family. Show you how wicked they were. As a matter of fact, the, uh, uh, the book, um, The Prince, which was written by uh, Machiavelli. Machiavelli was based upon Cesare Borgia. And it shows you how much of a wicked individual, despicable and deviant individual he was. Cesare Borgia. All right, that's how you would say the name correctly. Cesare Borgia. Borgia, right? And that book was written by uh, Machiavelli, which a lot of these mobsters, you know, the, the high ranking mobsters of, the, of uh, La Cosa Nostra, a lot of them idolized that book for its uh, deviancy, you know. Uh, the book called The Prince by Machiavelli. Matter of fact, um, even in the movie Bronx Tale, the actor uh, Chaz Palamentieri, he played the character of Sonny, which, which was some mob boss. Now, there's a scene in the movie Bronx Tale where the actor Chaz Palamentieri, who plays Sonny, the mobster Sonny, uh, speaks about the book The Prince by Machiavelli. He, he quotes a he quotes a line from that book. Okay? So the, what's the point? The point is that you had the, the first crime family. That's what they were known as, the Borgia family. They were Edomites, and they came into power during the latter part of the 1300s. And that was the beginning of Esau coming back into power. So this is what it's meant by, they shall build, but I will throw down. Now here's the point, and they shall call them, who's the them? The Edomites, Edom. Esau is Edom, Genesis 36 and 8, right? They shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever, as in the wicked. So now what's the head tribe of the nation of Edom? Amalek. So now building on that scripture here, Mike, Malachi 1 and 4, if we go in the book of Job, Job 9 and 24 show you why the small hatters control everything. That's that's not coincidence. That's by design, the Heavenly Father's design. It's called prophecy. This is why they control everything. Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. See? Now who's the wicked? Esau, Edom. The Edomites are the wicked. So they rule right now, they're ruling the earth in wickedness. It's given to them by the Heavenly Father. Another scripture that follows up with that is uh, the Book of Wisdom of Solomon, the sixth chapter. 
You can read that beginning at the first verse. So there's the point. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. Right. And that's what the wicked has done through something called iconoclasm. Why did, why did we have a, a period of time called iconoclasm? Which, when you go into the word iconoclasm, it means defacing of the images. Because when we were ruling as Israelites, a lot of the images that we put up were dark images, dark-skinned people, Negroes, if you will, so-called Negroes, woolly hair, dark skin. So when Esau came into power, what they did was they destroyed our images. Either they ch they chipped the noses off, or they just or they destroyed the image by whitewashing it. Hence the term iconoclasm. Now a lot of people will say, well, over the time, you know, the noses was a, a gentle thing. That's why they fell off. No, there's statues with the, th the fingers clearly are intact. The fingers, which is, which, if you want to go with that explanation, would be just as weak as the nose. The nose is on the statues. The fingers are clearly intact. Even the pinky finger is intact. But somehow the nose is chipped off. Why? Because it, there's a clear distinction between the nose of an Edomite and the nose of a Jake. No, the nose of an Israelite. So the point is, they, they, when, when the Edomites came into power, they tried to wash, whitewash us out of history. When I say us, meaning so, begin with the so-called black man. All right, They tried to whitewash us out of history, as if we were never part of ancient history. You see? And that's something the wicked would do. All right? A uh, matter of fact, though, uh, how does that scripture go? You were forgers of lies. That's uh, the same book, Job 13 and 4. Let's, let's bring that scripture up. That's something the wicked would do, man. Job 13 and 4, it says, but ye are forgers of lies. See? All this man does is lie. Beginning with the small headers. All they do is lie. Dr. Michael Quaz Brown is a liar, man. Now he's talking about some some hatred that we're showing them. What about the hatred that you so-called Jews have showed us throughout the years? Like I said, I, I, I pulled out a main ace card, the cargo slave ship trade. You were the main, you were the main nation behind it, man. You so-called Jews, because you're the ones that benefited from it the most. Like I said, going back to the term uh, that was used during the Roman Empire, the, the Latin term, cui bono. Cui bono means who benefit. You so-called Jews, you small hatters, you benefited the most from our, our misery, man, our slavery, from them cargo slave ships. Okay, now you have the nerve to talk about some hatred? <laughs> man, when we get our hands on you devils, boy, <laughs> we'll be unto you. That's all I got to say. Job 13 and 4, but ye are forgers of lies. You are all physicians of no value. Okay. And the small hat is there's a book called, now the guy who wrote the book, Arthur Kosler, later he was killed, he was murdered because he brought out the, the despicable lifestyle of the so-called Jew, man, the small hat is. That's in the book, of, uh, the book, the 13th tribe, how filthy and dirty they were. They are, I should say. Okay, real despicable people, all right? Now, the thing is, among them, even among them, we have Israelites among them people. I'm talking about the Ish people, the small hatters. Even among them, we have Israelites. The Lord is going to sift his people from among them. Because remember, the nation of Israel is scattered among every nation. And we teach this here at Great Millstone. Okay? But again, Job 13 and 4, but ye are forges of lies. You are all physicians of no value. There you go. So who's ruling right now? Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. That's why the small hatters own everything. All right. They own the, the Federal Reserve. They own what else? They own the world, beginning with the top banking families. The top banking families, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, they are indeed small hatters, so-called Jews, if you will. And it's no coincidence that they are ruling, that they own everything, because it's Bible prophecy. And I'm reading it. I'm reading it to you. Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. And I explain what that is. That's going back to iconoclasm. When Esau put up his face as being the face of the heavenly father. The face of the heavenly father 
the, the face of the son of the heavenly father, the face of the angels. All right, that's what this man has done. All right, he's a forger of lies, okay? A physician of no value, like the Bible says. And he's a liar, okay? The Israelites all look like him. Even the Egyptians in the movie, <laughs> case in point, the movie uh, Ten Commandments by uh, uh, Cecil B. DeMille, which I believe was a small hatter, so-called Jew, right? He had the actor... Uh, Charlton Heston playing Moses, which is a joke. All right, Moses wasn't Moses didn't look like a so-called white man. Moses was a man of the tribe of Levi. Moses was a dark-skinned man, a so-called black man, if you will. Okay, there's a scripture when you go in the book of Exodus. Now they do they, they don't show you that in the movie, the Ten Commandments. The Heavenly Father Moses had doubted the power of the Heavenly Father because. The Heavenly Father wanted to send him to Egypt to help re redeem, liberate his people, which are the Israelites. So Moses was doubting the power of the Heavenly Father. So the Heavenly Father said, look, let me show you something. Let me show you a, a sample of my power. So let's see what happened. Let's go to Exodus, the fourth chapter, and the sixth verse. And the Lord said, furthermore unto him, put now thine hand into thy bosom, meaning your chest, Right? And he put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. What color is snow, people? So-called white. You have these so-called white people that call themselves white, which they're really not white. White, they're red. The word Edom means red, but nevertheless, that's what they call themselves, white, right? So here's Moses putting his hand into his bosom like the Lord told him. And when he, the Lord told him, pull out your hand now, and he looked at his hand, and his hand was, like it says, leprous as snow, meaning the pigment, the dark hue, the dark pigment was taken away from that part of his hand. And it looked like, like so-called white. It looked like snow, the color of snow, right? Then the Lord told him, and he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. So what, what, what do we get out of there? What do we extrapolate out of there? Moses had to be of dark hue, a dark-skinned man. All right? A dark-skinned man. That's what Moses was. So why is Charlton Heston playing the role of Moses in that movie? Which that movie was extremely popular. It came out in, what, 1956? It's called The Ten Commandments. Every so-called Easter, they always play that movie. Right? How come that scene is not in the movie? Now, granted, they couldn't put everything in Moses' life in, in a two-hour, or two-and-a-half-hour, three-hour movie, right? That, you, got a, you got an argument there. But why did that was pretty phenomenal, this part that I read here. Why didn't they put that part in the movie? They wouldn't put that part in the movie because then you get a clue that Moses had to be a dark-skinned man. Moses had to be a so-called black man, a man of color, okay? But again, we read the scripture. That's what the wicked would do. Job 13 and 4, all right? Um, you are forgers of lies. You're a physician of no value. This man's a liar. And more and more, right? More and more his lies are being exposed. Every day his lies are being exposed, okay? As, it's, as the scripture has said, that man of sin be revealed. All right, so let's get into this video here. Like I said, I got a few comments I want to make on this, especially the part where Michael Quaz Brown says he talks about hatred. All right. He talks about hatred. <laughs> the devil has the nerve, man. Talk about hatred. Why? Just because, uh, well, oh, wait a minute. Let's read the book of Galatians 4 and 16. What? Uh, we're showing you hatred because we're telling you the truth? Is, is that what it is, Dr. Michael Quaz Brown? We're showing you hatred because we're speaking the truth. Let's read the scripture. Galatians, the book of Galatians, the fourth chapter, the 16th verse. It says, am I therefore become your enemy, Dr. Michael Quaz Brown? Um, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Oh, so now we're showing hatred because we're telling the truth? 
that you, you so-called white people, you ish people, that you're not the real Jews, all right? You're not the people of the Bible. Now, granted, there's Israelites scattered among you, but on, you know, overall, you're not the people, all right? And, and a major point can be made if you were the people back in 1948, May 14th, 1948, all the prophecies in the Bible concerning what would happen when the real Israelites go back to Israel would have been fulfilled. Here it is more than 70 years and still we're waiting for prophecies to be fulfilled, such as Revelation 22, Revelation 21, where it speaks about this new Jerusalem, right? That's going to be built, all right? You're going to have 12 foundations. You're going to have the 12 apostles of the Lamb, right? You're going to have King David sitting on the seat. Where is that? Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, where it speaks about the new covenant that the Israelites are going to be under when the Israelites return back to the land of Israel. That's pursuant to Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, the new covenant. We don't, that didn't happen in 1948. And it's been more than 70 years and we're still waiting for it to happen because you, this all proves that you're not the people. Back in Isaiah, the second chapter, it says, nation shall learn war no more when the real Israelites go back into Israel. We still see wars, man. As a matter of fact, we're getting ready to have World War III. So what, is all, what does all this prove? That you are not the people, Dr. Michael Quaz Brown. Again, physicians of no value, forgers of lies. Your lies up, man. Your time is up and your lies are up, okay? Your lies ain't working no more. <laughs> like that song. Your lies ain't working no more, man. All right, so let's get into the video. an idea of some of the hatred some of the racial that, that is michael quas brown right here talking about some goddamn hatred hatred that we're up against in, in, when we're dealing with black hebrew issues. No, what you're up against is the truth destroying your lies that's what you're up against all right you're up against being exposed like uh like uh the apostle paul said you would be Let's read it. Second Thessalonian, that man of sin. Second Thessalonian 2 and uh, I'll read the third and fourth verse. Let no man deceive you by any means, by any means, for that day shall not come except they come a falling away first. And as us as Israelites, we had to fall as a nation, 67 AD. And that man of sin be revealed. That's Esau, the Edomites, the wicked. That's what you're up against. You being exposed, you being revealed. All your skullduggery, all your wickedness is being exposed through this knowledge, through this truth by the prophets of the Lord. Okay? But you call it hatred. Which, that's what, again, that's what the devil would do. A forger of lies. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, the son of destruction, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Yeah, that's that's the the these small hatters, beginning with these top banking families. They believe that they're God. That's why they want to bring a so-called New World Order. And in that so-called New World Order, which is on the back of the dollar bill, Norvos Ordo Seclorium, New World Order. Did the Heavenly Father tell you to do that? Is that according to Bible prophecy? Yes, it is but not in righteousness and wickedness. The one who's going to bring a real new world order is the one you call Jesus Christ, which his name is Yahweh Shai, which is a so-called black man. He's going to bring a new world order to the Israelites. The Israelites are going to be ruling in righteousness in this new world order that the Lord is bringing, not your new world order where you're going to have these top banking families who are nothing but Satanists ruling. Okay? So you exalt yourself above all that is called God. Like I said, you put up your face as God, the Son of God, the angels, who oppose it, and you did that during the so-called um, iconoclasm period, where you were destroying all the dark art, you were defacing the images that we had set up when we were ruling during the so-called dark ages, like I, I mentioned before, who oppose it and exalt himself above all that is called God, 
or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Who the hell is that talking about? If not the so-called white man. All right? Let's read on. Uh, six verse. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. That's why Dr. Michael Quas Brown is upset and he calls it hatred. No, it's not hatred to reveal, to expose your lies, Dr. Michael Quas Brown, the lies of your people, the small hatters. It's not hatred to expose their lies and bring back the truth. That's not hatred. That's actually love. What you call hatred, that, that, that's actually love. The love of the truth. You, you small hatters, you hate the truth. That's your problem. You hate the truth. You delight in lies. Like the Bible says, Job 13 and 4, you are forgers of lies. You delight in lies. You don't delight in the truth. You don't tell the truth. Okay? And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. And this is the work of Yahweh Bashim Yahshah. The Heavenly Father through his only begotten Son is doing this. This is his work. Or this is their work. To expose your lies and to bring in the truth. This is a time of truth now. It's truth time. We've had your lies. Okay, we've had all your, your BS, your wickedness, your lies. Now it's time for the truth. Okay? So you're being revealed in your time. Not the time is now. And now we now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let. Who's that? The Heavenly Father is allowing this man to fulfill prophecy. Allowing this man to rule in wickedness. And he is the mystery of iniquity because the majority of people don't know that he's the devil. That he was created to be the devil. He's created to be the wicked. Yeah, the majority of people of the world don't know that this man was created to be the wicked, okay? Uh, Proverbs 16 and 4, the Lord have made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. The Lord made the wicked. The Lord made this man to be the wicked. The Edomites, Esau. And one of the gods they worshipped was Quaz, and Dr. Michael Brown looks just like Quaz. Okay, that's why we call him Dr. Michael Quaz Brown. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And that's what we're getting ready to see. When Yahweh Shai comes back, he's going to take Esau out of the way. And that's pursuant to uh, Isaiah, the uh, 63rd chapter, the first verse. Yahweh Shai is going to take, violently take Esau out of the way. It's only going to take Yahweh Shai one hour to do it. That's in the book of Revelation. All right, and then the, beginning with the top banking families, they're going to be reduced to slaves underneath us Israelites. Okay, let's keep reading. And then shall that wicked be revealed. See, that's the time we're in. That's why Michael Quas Brown is so upset because they're being revealed. All their lies are being revealed. The small hat is right. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. What's the spirit of his mouth? These scriptures, these prophecies spoken by the prophets is consuming them. Again, that's why Michael Brown is upset and he calls it hatred. Oh, we should, oh now we're, we're <laughs> as Israelites, we're bringing out the truth. So now we're showing you hatred. Am I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Galatians 4 and 16. I just read it earlier. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So you can, you can call that hatred then. When the Lord comes, he's going to destroy your kingdom. You want to call that hatred? Go ahead and call it hatred. Now you had your time to rule. All right, now you're coming down, man. What you thought you, well, the Bible says the, the inward thought is that they rule, for, that they want to rule forever. Psalms 49, 11. You devil thinks, you devils, you think you're going to rule forever. No, you, you, you coming down, man. Your rulership is over. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's your manifest destiny. That's what you told our brothers, the so-called North American Indians, when you took over their land. But by the way, was that an act of love or act of, act of hatred? When you stole their land. Hey, this guy, Michael Brown, talking about some hatred, and he's on stolen property. You're on stolen property that your father's, your forefathers stole. And you're talking this, this, this shit about hatred. 
when you're on stolen property that your, fa your forefathers stole from our brothers, the so-called North American Indians, which is of the tribe of Gad, of the nation of Israel. And when you took them down, you, you uttered the words, manifest destiny. It's their time to go down. Well, guess what? It's your time to go down now. Everybody has their time, right? It's your time to go down, Esau, Edom. And yeah, Michael Brown, you are an Edomite, whether you accept it or not. And you're being exposed. And then shall that wicked be revealed. And you're the wicked. That's why you're talking that nonsense about some hatred. You have the nerve to talk about hatred? As much hatred as your people have showed the world? <laughs> And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Yeah, that's talking about Yahweh Shai and the angels. When Yahweh Shai comes back in those so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord, which are extremely bright. All right? I'm going to destroy your kingdom, your society, your, your, your hopes and dreams of asp and aspirations for a new world order. Yahweh Shai is going to destroy that, man. It's only going to take him one hour to do it. Even him who's coming is after the working of Satan. <laughs> That's you devils, man. With all power and signs and lying wonders. Yeah, your so-called technology. Which is an illusion, your, your technology. Okay? And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. And that's, that's this man's power. That's your power. The power of you Edomites is to deceive. That's your power. Deception. Okay, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, that's of our people because they believe in you. The majority of our people believe in you, Edomites. That's two thirds. That's why two thirds are going to cut off and die. But one third, the elect, they're waking up and they're not trusting in you, Edomites, anymore. All right, the one third, the elect, they see that you, Edomites, are going down, that you're losing your power. Okay, and with all deceivableness, of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Right, that's the two-thirds. Zechariah 13 and 8. The one-third, they have received the love of the truth and we hope we're of that ilk. Begin to the apostle now. We hope we're of the ilk of the one-third which we have received the truth. We're woken up and that's why through the scriptures we're cursing out you devils and you call it hatred. Michael Quas Brown calls it hatred because we're bringing out the truth. We're destroying his lies by bringing out the truth. That's hatred, right? Okay, well, let it so be it. You want to call it hatred? Be our guest. Let's get back to the video. Against, it, it, when we're dealing with black Hebrew Israelites. Now, uh, please he, hear. Notice he says black Hebrew Israelites. Time and time again, we've done videos showing you we have members that look like, even like him, of his color. But he, cons he insists on calling us black Hebrew Israelites. You see the deception? You see, you see, you see the, 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 uh, the, uh, the hypocrisy, the deception, the lies, forges of lies? Black Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> oh, man. Let's, let's move on. Racism is all around. I, I don't have to tell. Racism is all around. And, and, about and, and that's a that's the uh, um, the term racism. That's the uh, uh, buzzword. All right. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? And the fair. It's become a nefarious word. When the truth is, the heavenly Father is only for His people. There are scriptures I can read in the Bible which you would you would uh, you would deem it as being racist. As a matter of fact, let me let me. Racist mean one is for their own race, for their own kind. Now, in the book of Amos, let's read that. Let me give you one example. Amos 3 and 2. Right? The Lord is only for his people. Amos 3 and 2. I'll read the first verse. It says, Hear this word that the Lord have spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth, Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Now, on, on its first face, that sounds like a racist statement. The Lord, Lord is only for the race of the nation of Israel, the Israelites. And that's the truth. The Lord is only for the Israelites. And that's what we teach. 
We also teach that the Israelites can look like any nation where they were scattered. But see, these guys, these small hatters, the forgers of lies, they have their own agenda. They're trying to make this into a so-called white against black thing. All right. And they're failing miserably because, like I said, we have Israelites that look like so-called white people. You can't call it a so-called white versus black thing. Uh, you know, well, in the case of Great Millstone, because you do have Israelite groups out there that actually teach, just shows you how retarded they are. They actually teach that all Israelites look like so-called black people. You do have them out there. But if you're talking about Great Millstone, we don't teach that nonsense. We actually teach that you're going to have Israelites looking like every nation where they were scattered, including so-called white people. We teach this. Okay, so you can't make it a so-called white versus black narrative. You can't do that. But you're going to do it anyway. You know why? Because you have an agenda. You're trying to stifle the truth. That's your big agenda, trying to stifle the truth from coming out. You're trying to stop us Israelites that really have the truth from exposing you like you're supposed to be exposed, like you're supposed to be exposed. Pursuant to 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, I just read it. That man of sin be revealed. We're in the time where you're supposed to be exposed. Right? But you call it hatred. Yeah, yeah. in other words, it's hatred to expose you and your lies, right? That's hatred. <laughs> Incredible. Let's get back to the video. Racism is all around. I, I don't have to tell you about white hatred of blacks in the past. White hatred of black. First of all, there's no such thing as white people. No such, no such thing as black people. All right, so-called white people are red. Okay, they're red. They're not white. And so-called black people are brown. They're not black. So let's destroy that right there. Let's nip that in the bud. No such thing as black people. No such thing as white people. Okay? And, and hatred of Jews universally around the world. Hatred of Jews. All right? Hatred of Jews. Like they're the Jews. Right? They're the, they're the Lord's chosen people. M meanwhile, there's a lot more than the Jews. Because when you, when you use the term Jew, that goes back to the southern kingdom. Judah, Benjamin, Levi. They were collectively called Jews. But there's nine other tribes. Dr. Michael Quaz Brown. What about the northern kingdom? What about the tribe of Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben? What about them? What, they don't count? You're always talking about the Jews, the Jews. What about the rest of the tribes? What about the northern kingdom? See, furthermore, you so-called Jews, you converted to our customs. During the time of John Hyacinus, you were forced to convert to our customs. You're not the, in, in, you're not the uh, original Jew, so to speak. Okay, you're not the intrinsic, that's the word I wanted. You're not the intrinsic Jew, so to speak. You don't come out of the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You come out of the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. The gig is up, man. All right. The truth is is out there. You call it hatred. OK. And the Bible talks more than just the Jews. It talks about the. Let's get it. It talks about the whole nation of Israel coming back to the land of Israel. Isaiah 14 and one. And like I said, if you're the if you're the, those people. You know, the chosen people and everybody knows knows who they are. If you're the chosen people intrinsic intrinsic to the Bible, the original J-E-W-S, how come those prophecies have not been fulfilled? Nation not, not learning war anymore, right? Uh, the kingdom of Jerusalem being built, the streets of gold, where are the streets of gold that it speaks about in Revelation, the 21st chapter? Huh? Where, where is the, uh, 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 the angels guarding the gates Three gates on each side, a total of 12 gates, north, south, east, and west. That's the prophecy. Where are they? And you've had more than 70 years to do it since 1948. Where is it? <laughs> you guys are a joke, man. Isaiah 14 and 1, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel, not just the Jews, Israel, the whole nation. There's 12 tribes, Dr. Michael Quaz Brown. 
Can you tell me who the tribe of Issachar is today, Dr. Michael Quasbrow? Can you tell me who the tribe of Nathalie is? Are they Jews? Technically, no, they're from the, the Northern Kingdom. The only Jew would be from the Southern Kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, Levi. They were collectively called Jews. But then to go deeper, uh, the whole nation came out of what? The waters of Judah, all right, as it is written, okay? Anyway, for the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land, right? Because we were taken out of it. No, did, 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 we were taken out of our land. Did, I'm a little excited. Did this happen back in 1948? It said the Lord will choose who? Israel and set them in their own land. So back in 1948, we're supposed to know who all, the, you guys talk about, oh, we're the children, we came back to the land of Israel, the Jews came back. Well, what about the rest of the tribes? We're supposed to know all the tribes, right? Because the, the nation is going to collectively come back, all right? Not just the Jews, the whole nation, all 12 tribes. See? It says, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them. That's the other tribes, the whole nation, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So did this prophecy happen back in 1948? The answer is no, and here it is, it's been more than 70 years, and we're still waiting for that prophecy, because you're not the people, man. So stop it with this, the, the, the J-E, the J-E-W-S, stop it attributing those people to you. You're not those people. You're not the in intrinsic Israelites that the Bible speaks of, okay? And more and more that information is going to come out. More and more it's going to be exposed. You don't fit the prophecies, all right? The hatred of this group and hatred of that group, it goes in all... And then the hatred really came from your people. All right. And when you go deeper, it's really the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father said, I will put enmity between the seed of the serpent, which is you, you so-called Jews, you Edomites, and the seed of the woman, which represent the true Israelites. That's us. So there's always been hatred. There's always been the word em enmity means hatred. That You find that in the book of Genesis, the third chapter, where the Lord said, I will put enmity between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the nation of Israel. So there's always been animosity. Matter of fact, there's a scripture where it speaks about Amalek was the first to war against the nation of Israel. And these small hatters, they're of the tribe of Amalek. So there's always been friction between us, you so-called Jews, and us, us Israelites. Okay? Different directions, okay? And there are plenty of African Americans who don't hate whites. And he, said, he, said, he said African Americans. No such thing as African Americans. All right. The word Africa goes back to Leo Scipio Africanus, which was a so called white man. America goes back to Amerigo Vespucci, which also was a so called white man. We are not African Americans. That's not, the, the term doesn't exist as a people. Okay. But see, again, ye are forgers of lies. See, they're pushing that old failed narrative. Now, someone who doesn't know the truth. They'll fall for that shit, African-American. And mind you, that term didn't come about till the, what, the 1980s? During the Cargo Slave Ship, they weren't calling us no goddamn African-American. During the 40s, they weren't calling us no goddamn African-American. They were calling us uh, colored. Before that was Negro. In the 70s, it was black. The term African-American didn't come about until the 1980s. All right, and, and it's been sticking around ever since. That is not our nationality, Dr. Michael Quaz Brown. And their top scholars know this shit. But see, again, they're pushing that narrative. You are forgers of lies because they have an agenda. They don't want the truth to come out, who we truly are and who they truly are. Because if you find out who you truly are, that you're not, no, there's no such thing as an African-American, you'll start to, well, well, who the hell am I? That's when you find out who you really are, which is a Hebrew Israelite, okay? That's the truth. <laughs> and that's the truth that these devils don't want to come out. They're terrified of coming out, that you Israelites out there will find out who you are.
That's why he's pushing that African-American nonsense. Let's go to the book of uh, Isaiah. It's time you wake up and find out who the hell you are, that you're the Hebrew Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Isaiah 1 and 3, the ox knoweth his owner and the ass his master's crib. Now the ox and the ass is two stupid animals, but at least the ox know who his owner is and the ass, which is a donkey, knows his master's crib. He knows where he belongs. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Right, the real Israelites don't consider that they're the Israelites, beginning with the so-called Negro. The majority of them don't consider that they're of the tribe of Judah, of the nation of Israel, and all the way down to so-called Mexicans. The majority of them don't consider they're of the tribe of Issachar. Only a few so-called Mexican brothers know that they're of the tribe of Issachar, of the nation of Israel. Only a few understand that. The majority don't. So that's the, that's the scripture. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. Don't consider what? That they're the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Because they listen to these failed narratives from guys like Dr. Michael Brown with their lies. Remember, you are forgers of lies. But their lies are being exposed by the, by the elect of the nation of Israel. The elect of the nation of Israel, they got the truth. They know the truth. That's why we can see right through Michael Brown and his bullshit. Michael Quaz Brown. Okay, but he calls it, because we've woken up, he calls it hatred. African Americans who don't hate whites and plenty of whites who, who don't hate blacks and on it. Yeah, well, if the, the so-called white people, uh, again, there's no such thing as white. But the real Edomites, once you come back to the truth, you Israelites, you, you, you learn to hate the Edomites for what they have done to our people. All right, they're, they're the ones that had a perpetual hatred. Let's get that, Ezekiel 35. The Edomites are the one, are the people who've had a perpetual hatred against us, man. An ongoing hatred. Here it is right here. Ezekiel, the 35th chapter, the 5th verse. Because thou has had a perpetual, well, let, let, me, let me show you what he's talking about, the Edomites. Let's, let's uh, go to the first verse, Ezekiel 35 and 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir. Mount Seir represents the Edomites. Mount Seir was the home of the Edomites. So it ain't talking about prophesy against a mountain, an actual mountain. It's talking about the people. The, the term Mount Seir is a metaphor for the people. Set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. Because eventually, Yahweh is going to destroy the Edomites and their kingdom. Now let's jump down to the, the, the point. So in the, in the uh, second verse, it says, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it, right? Let's jump down to the fifth verse. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. So you're the, you're the ones that, 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 are, that is filled with hate, man. You have the nerve to talk about hatred from us because we're bringing out the truth. We're destroying your lies with the truth. You call that hatred. No, you're the ones that have brought hatred against our people. And you're still bringing hatred against our people. Because thou has had a perpetual hatred, an ongoing hatred, and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword. What's a good example of that? Slavery. And you're still shedding the blood to this very day. Your, your, your police system. Always shedding the blood of a so-called black man. So-called, come on, man. You know, uh, has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword. In the time of their calamity, in the time when their iniquity had an end. Right. In the time when their iniquity had an end. That's why we went into slavery underneath you. Because we were being punished for our iniquities by the Heavenly Father. And plenty of scriptures that bring that out. Let's read the next verse. It says, Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood. So blood is being prepared for you Edomites and your and your your wickedness and your hatred is coming back to you now. Like like uh, Malcolm X said, uh, <laughs> you got to kill him. <laughs> uh, inside joke. Like Malcolm X said, uh, the chickens are coming home to roost. Right? The chickens are coming home to roost. That's what Mal Malcolm X said. Right? So all your wickedness is coming back upon your plate, Esau. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, 
I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. There you go. So if thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. And you are a man of blood. You are a man of violence, you Edomites. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it him that passeth out and him that returneth. Right, your society. Mount Seir represents you Edomites. Your society is crumbling, man. Yahweh is going to destroy your, your society. Let's get back to the video. African Americans who don't hate whites and plenty of whites who, who don't hate blacks and on and on it goes. We are Again, hatred. You want to talk about hatred? You Edomites, you have mastered yourselves in hatred. I just read the scripture, Ezekiel, the 35th chapter. You've had a perpetual hatred against our people. So you Edomites, you should be the last one to talk about hatred. Understand that. All I'm saying is within this group, within this cult, especially the more radical... Said, yeah, so what he just talked about the hatred between uh, whites for blacks and all that. Well, how did that come about? I wonder how that came about, huh? Michael Quaz Brown, that the hatred you, you, you say so-called blacks have for so-called whites. How did that come about? Who started that? Huh? <laughs> who, who took us out of our, our land, which at that time we were dwelling in Africa, right? After we came out. First of all, you, 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 you Edomites rooted us out of our land in Israel. It was called the Roman persecution. That was us that you rooted out. 67 AD. Then we fled into trying to get away from you. We fled into the north and west parts of Africa. Who came and rounded us up? Or who had uh, the so-called Arabs and the so-called Africans round us up and soul have a soul to you? Who 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 are the ones been uh, who are the ones who benefited from that? Huh? If it wasn't your people, you small hatters, you so-called Jews, huh? And you have the nerve to talk about hatred. But see, once again, they are forges of lies. See? Cool elements of black Hebrew Israelites, the racial hatred there is... There he goes with the black Hebrew Israelites again. Ugly and intense. The racial hatred is ugly and intense. <laughs> oh, man. The racial hatred is ugly and intense. <laughs> the racial hatred, huh? Just because we're bringing out the truth on you and you, you and your people, huh? The lies that you that you've sowed throughout the years. Just because the truth is being exposed, that's racial hatred, huh? <laughs> racial hatred. <laughs> you devils should be the last to talk about racial hatred, man. You guys are funny. And, and in order to overcome it, we can't just overcome it by words. It must again. What they're really trying to overcome is the truth coming out on them. They're trying to overcome them being exposed. Like it said in 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, that man of sin be revealed, that man of sin be exposed. That's what they're trying to overcome. That's why throughout the years, they've tried to stifle this, this truth by taking down our channels. I mean, if we were saying a bunch of gibberish, why are they taking down our channels, right? Why should they care? Why does Dr. Michael Quaz Brown and Vocab Malone, why do they care about our movement so much? Because they're being exposed, that's why. These two individuals, they have, they're part of an agenda. They're part of an agenda. They've actually been hired by individuals a lot more powerful than themselves. They actually have hands in their back. I'm talking about Vocab Malone and this, this crackpot right here. They actually have been hired, man. And, and it's nothing new. We read about in the book of Ezra how you had um, uh, members of the other nations that were being hired to frustrate our purpose. At that time, we were, we were physically building the temple. Now we're spiritually building the temple, right? And once again, we see that the individuals have been hired to try to frustrate our purpose. You can read about that in Ezra's the fourth chapter, Ezra the fourth chapter in the Bible, all right? Just like the Bible said, there's no new thing under the sun. So that's that's what we're seeing. Certain individuals like Vocab Malone and this guy here, they have been hired by the, the small hatter elite. All right, the wicked elite to try to frustrate our purpose. What is our purpose? Of bringing out this knowledge, this truth. And at the same time, watching Esau's kingdom crumble. Because that's how it's going to crumble, by this truth being brought out. So that's really what it's all about. 
That's why this guy, Michael Brown, is so upset. Okay? All right, so on that note, I will end the video there. Hopefully, you were edified. On to the next one.